Well, you know, I was on the world figure skating team in my youth. Yes. And then I didn't really think about going to medical school or being a doctor specializing in nutrition. But I was into eating healthy, and my father was into was sickly, and he changed his diet, and we tried to eat real healthy as, a, as children. And I became very passionate about the fact that Americans were destroying their health with a diet style that was creating heart attacks and strokes and dementia. And, no, and the people were going to doctors taking poisonous substances to try to repair themselves. from a, So I got very excited about it. And actually, I started um, dating my wife at the time, and she was, going to med- she was going to go to medical school, too. Nice. And she said, well, if you're so passionate about this, why don't you go to medical school, too? Quit, you know, well, quit the shoe business, quit your family's business. And because and I was dabbling in some um, courses at night, thinking I might want to go back to medical school. But then once I started getting involved with my wife, I realized, you know, this is, there's no point in me dabbling. I should just do this with both feet in and quit everything, retire, you know, sell my father, sell his shoe stores and retire and me go back to school and I should go back to school full time. So I went back to the postgraduate pre-med program at Columbia because I already had graduated from college without taking the requirements. So I went to medical school with a specific intent of being a physician specializing in nutrition and doing what I'm doing now. Mm. But never did I imagine I'd have so much satisfaction and self-reward from affecting so many hundreds of thousands of people. So, um, you know, here's the thing. When you're helping one person or five people, you feel just as great about doing it. It's and so it's just true. an exciting career. But the fact that I've had, had such a, I've have, you know, written 10 books and have six New York Times bestsellers and had some very popular television shows on PBS has been the icing on the cake, so to speak. And I'm very... Um, just tremendously grateful for the opportunities I've had. I'm grateful for you too. I'm grateful that people you. like you exist. You. Um, should we dive into the questions? You were a former world-class figure skater. What did you eat as a very active athlete? I ate a lot of food. You know, I used to drive to, like, we used to go to the rink in the morning before school at like four or five in the morning. Mm-hmm. And the back of my seat of my car was like a bathtub full of food, of fruits and vegetables and nuts and, whole, you know, and manna breads and stuff like that. So you were and vegan nuts, when you were a figure skater? I was, I was. But I ate a lot of food because we were like, I, I, train three hours in the morning. After school, I'd be running home with a pack on my back up the hills, and then we go to lift weights, and then we go to um, acrobatics class, and then we go back to... So it was exercising, it was a professional. It was exercise with my job. And then when I, through college, I... So I exercised full-time, probably six hours or more a day. Wow. So you have to eat a lot of calories, probably more than 4,000 calories a day. And I would be running behind... I remember my mother used to drive the car, and we'd, um, and we'd run behind the car. You know, we'd be... Um, I think, what was she doing there? Playing music or doing something. But we'd be running on hills, running with backs on our pack. How be, fast would she go in the car? Oh, I don't know. Just, we'd be, I don't like know. Five to ten miles an hour. <laughs> 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 You'd have to run after the food. <laughs> you want to eat, catch up. <laughs> you see so much food when you're an athlete. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> that's true. That's true. What are the gold, silver, and bronze metal foods that make us feel full while being the most nutrient dense? What's the one to one pound rule? Well, look, first of all, we know that certain foods have a tremendous effect on extending human lifespan. And those same foods that prevent cancer have an effect on your appetite to ratchet down the appetite and make you desire to eat the right amount of calories and not overeat. Those same foods that protect against cancer also thicken the microbiome, creating a biofilm over your villi in the small intestines, which slows the glycemic effect of the foods you eat, lowering your risk of diabetes, extending your lifespan. So what I'm saying is that when you eat foods like vegetables and beans and mushrooms and onions, and actually there are four foods that have the most power, are too raw and too cooked. The too raw, of course, are green cruciferous vegetables and the onion and scallion family. When you, they promote the both of healthy bacteria. They produce very beneficial anti-diabetic and anti-inflammatory compounds. And then you have the two cooked foods, beans and mushrooms. Very, you should say, the right type of fuel that favors the growth of healthy bacteria in your gut. So, so, what, so of course, we're having people to want people to eat a pound of raw vegetables a day and a pound of cooked vegetables a day. You know, I always say that we've landed the man on the moon already, yes. which, which means we already know how to win the war on cancer. It's been done. We know how to win the war on cancer. How do we do that? Vegetables are the answer. But people don't like the answer. They're looking for a magic pill they can take and still three, smoke three packs a day and not get lung cancer with a magic pill. They want to be able to eat their hot dogs and bacon and, and pizza and croissants and yeah. candy and still not get breast cancer and be able to take a magic pill. Never going to happen. It's not a fairy tale. This is real life. In real life, if you're not willing to eat a lot of vegetables, you're going to be in big trouble. And it's also what we don't eat as well as what we do eat, correct? Absolutely. You know, it's that, that these frankenfoods that have permeated the American diet, right now it's 60% of calories come from processed foods. 
that have all these um, incredible, dangerous effects. And I know a lot of people out there are now recognizing, finally realizing that what you eat creates heart attacks, obesity and diabetes, yes, dementia, yes, they're agreeing with that, cancer, of course, what you eat is the major factor, yes, but, but who's talking about the fact that these foods create mental illness yeah. and dementia and depression, anxiety? You know, 100 years ago, one in, a th one in 100 Americans were mentally ill, and today it's one in five. And the link between processed foods and commercial baked goods and, and fast food and major depression is that even two servings a week increases your risk by about 51%. And that people, and they, they get these highly calorically concentrated foods that flood the bloodstream very rapidly. It stimulates dopamine receptors in the brain, making you become dopamine sensitive over time, weakening your willpower, making you live to eat and the rest of your life doesn't matter anymore. Your creativity, your intelligence goes down. You, you become a drug-seeking animal. 